Welcome to the Speech Coach channel, the channel where we discuss all things related to stuttering, stammering, blocking, whatever you choose to call it. Today I'd like to discuss limiting beliefs and the impact that limiting beliefs have on the stuttering condition. My opinion is stuttering is a learned behavior and there's a ton of evidence to support that. Uh, we may have, as people who stutter, we may have pre, um, precursors that make us more vulnerable to stuttering. Uh, but just because we have uh, you know, certain genes or certain tendencies that are passed through uh, hereditary means does not mean that those genes need to be expressed. But you know, as stutterers, we obviously have expressed those genes uh, through learned behavior. Um, my opinion is that early childhood development, there are some factors, uh, you know, events, factors that occur at a very young age. And as a result of those, we develop certain limiting beliefs and those work in the establishment of stuttering. Uh, you know, some examples of littering, uh, limiting beliefs related to stuttering are uh, I can't speak as good as that person. Um, you know, a bunch of I can'ts. I can't, you know, I, I'm not a good public speaker. You know, I can't talk to women. Uh, I don't socialize well. Um, I'm flawed. I'm different. I'm not good enough. These are all limiting beliefs that all contribute to the stuttering condition. The thing about limiting beliefs is that they're not necessarily an accurate representation of reality. So let's just say, for example, if you were to remove the limiting belief, let's just say that the limiting belief that I'm a stutterer, right? If you believe, if you remove that limiting belief, do you still stutter? So, you know, the whole premise behind this is uh, there are certain limiting beliefs. They are deep in our neurology, our subconscious mind. They've been learned at an early age and they play like a like a tape recorder. They just play their programs over and over again. You get into a certain context and to a, a certain threatened speaking context and the program will run. It says, you know, in this in this situation, you stutter, you block, you hold back. Um, so the whole idea is, you know, if we attack these limiting beliefs, what happens? What happens to our stutter? Do we speak more clearly? Do we speak more freely? Um, so I want to talk about a specific vehicle to deal with stuttering um, and how we can change our limiting beliefs. So that vehicle is visualization. Visualization, uh, what it is, is basically uh, you're imagining yourself performing some task or action uh, in your mind. You're imagining it. And the way that it's done is it's very simple. You relax, you close your eyes, and you envision yourself doing that action um, or thing in your head. And as a result of doing that, you eventually create new neural pathways that will change your self-image to say, I can do these things. So for example, if you say, okay, well, I don't speak good in this situation, or I can't, I, I, you know, I can't do public speaking, or I can't speak socially. So if you visualize yourself doing those things, eventually what will happen is uh, your brain can't detect what's true reality and what is imagined. So you'll eventually develop new neural pathways that says, well, I can, I can do that. You, you, you kind of trick your brain in a way because you show yourself having the performance of speaking well in all these different contexts. And what happens is, you know, you develop those new neural pathways and your brain starts to have a new belief that you are a good speaker and you can speak publicly and you can speak socially. And, you know, um, so that's the premise behind the video. So um, I want to provide five tips on how to get started with visualization to begin to change your limiting beliefs regarding stuttering. So the very first thing is, uh, step one is simply make a list. Uh, you're going to start to visualize. You want to make a list of all the things that you're going to visualize in a visualization session. 
So what I like to do, because there's a lot of, there's still a lot of situations that I don't find myself comfortable in and that, you know, I may be prone to stuttering or blocking. So I will make a list of those, uh, especially troublesome contexts or situations. And I will, um, and I'll make a list of those and I'm, I'm, I'm ready at the forefront of my mind. Here are all the contexts or situations that I'm going to visualize. Uh, the second thing is to relax. So it's very important with visualization that you relax. Uh, if you bring any energy such as any nervous or um, any nervous or any um, just uh, negative uh, emotion or feeling into the visualization, when you're seeing yourself speaking well, you're going to associate that negative emotion or negative feeling. So it's important that you uh, first relax. So what I like to do is I like to do a quick five minute relaxation um, video clip on, on YouTube and uh, just to get myself in a good relaxed state before I visualize. That way I'm bringing good positive emotion into the visualization. The third thing is, is you want to be in a state that has uh, direct access into the subconscious mind where you're going to be rewriting um, you know, new belief systems into your subconscious mind about your ability to speak. So you want to get into what's called an alpha wave state. So an alpha wave state is basically, um, you know, when, when you first wake up, you're not asleep, but you're not fully alert yet. So an alpha state is kind of that middle ground there. So you want to be in an alpha state. Uh, that'll give you more access to right to the subconscious mind, new beliefs. So what I do is I listen to an audio uh, recording of uh, alpha wave state, and I will link that alpha wave state audio clip or the alpha wave audio uh, below. The fourth thing is you want to be uh, vivid and detailed in your visualization. So you want to try to bring as much detail into your visualization. Uh, you want to be... Um, you want to bring, you know, anything you can bring from your senses, like what do you see, you know, what do you hear, you know, just any little detail, the colors, you know, uh, you know, anything that can bring you into that experience. Like I said before, um, your brain can't detect whether you're living reality or you're, or you're imagining something. So you want to really show the brain that this is reality and this is truly you doing this thing, which is, in this case, speaking well, speaking fluently. Um, the fifth thing that I want to mention is emotion. So I'm going to talk about emotion a lot on this channel. Emotion is the super highway to change of the brain. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the emotion is the language of the brain. So you want to bring emotion into your visualization. So... Um, Two ways that I find especially um, especially good ways um, to invoke emotion into your visualization is number one, you want to feel the feelings that you would feel if it were true now. So if you can visualize and you say, "Well, I'm just a super charismatic speaker. I can speak, you know, I can speak on an outstanding level in any situation, in any context." Feel how you would feel if that were really true. And for people who stutter, I can guarantee you, you're going to feel pretty darn good about it. Um, so, you know, feel how you would feel if it were true now. The other thing is in invoking emotion is you want to um, really see yourself at an unbelievable level. So if you're visualizing yourself in certain context. You want to you want to visualize yourself really speaking just outstanding, like like the way Visualize yourself speaking the way you've always dreamed of. Um, so that's that's really, um, you know, that's step five for emotion. Um, you know, if you have a pragmatic brain like I do, and, you know, I, I tend to venture that a lot of people who stutter do are, are very pragmatic. Um, but basically, don't get caught up in the technical details of am I doing it right? Don't get too caught up in all the details. The main thing I would say is, number one, have fun. OK, because this this truly should be an exercise that you enjoy because you're really visualizing yourself doing pretty cool things. So um, so do that and, uh, you know, have fun. And if I would bring anything of, of anything that I mentioned, if I bring anything with me on 
what I need to effectively visualize, it would be that you should invoke emotion. Uh, so as long as you're invoking emotion at a bare minimum, you should be in good shape. So my challenge would be for anyone that wants to try this, try it for 30 minutes a day for 30 days. And you got to be consistent. You can't, you can't, you know, be on and off, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do this three days on and, or and two day off or no, do it every single day. And then look at it after 30 days, look at it and really see, you know, if you think that this provides a lot of value. Um, and then I'm sure you'll find that it's a very powerful tool and you'll probably continue to do it. Uh, with all that said, you know, please support the channel. Uh, you know, my mission is to spread awareness for people who stutter. You know, there's, there's just not a lot out here for us and there's a lot of misinformation and, um, you know, paradigm paralysis to where we just can't seem to understand what the cause of this is. Well, you know, th there's a lot of people out here that are on to, you know, the establishment of this and ways that we can change. So please support the channel, like, subscribe, turn on the post notifications, all that good stuff. And I'll continue to serve you and provide you with as much detail as I can to, you know, make us more fluent. Thanks.